I don't know about you all out there, but when I turned 16, the only thing that was on my mind was getting my license. Now, I failed the test the first time, but that's neither here nor there. When I finally got my L's, you couldn't tell me a word. I was the king of the world. I was finally able to leave the house, go wherever I wanted to go, get whatever I needed to get and do whatever I wanted to do. Now, yeah, that really was just going to school and getting food, but I had the freedom to do it on my own time. But getting a driver's license isn't just about passing a driver's test. In most states, you have to be a legal resident, which is a problem for approximately 8 million people living and working in the US illegally. And there's actually been a growing movement to allow people who are here illegally to get driver's licenses, with eight states introducing legislation just in 2019. But this idea has been super controversial, leading to fiery debates on both sides. So today, we're gonna dive deep into this debate and ask, should people who are here illegally be allowed to get driver's licenses? So, this topic is actually coming to us from PBS NewsHour Student Reporting Labs from Northview High School in Southern California. Let's meet the team, Seat Lolly, Francisco, Eric, and Angel. They helped produce this episode by researching, writing, shooting, and conducting interviews. So why were you all interested in this topic? So high school students like me are starting to get permits and driver's licenses, and we're starting to realize, to get anywhere, you need a car. That's yeah. true. It was weird because not everyone working in the country is allowed to get a driver's license either. So that's what piqued our curiosity and that's why we're going to get right down into it. All right, let's do it. Heck yeah, we will. Now, before we get into the specifics of this argument, it's important to understand the bigger debate about illegal immigration in America. There are an estimated 11 million people in the country illegally, and many of them are coming from countries where the line is really long to get a legal visa. Check out our video all about that. So the reality is that there's an estimated 8 million of them in the workforce. All of these people need to get to work and they are often driving, meaning that they are here illegally. You've also got unlicensed and uninsured drivers on the road. That's just the reality. So states have started trying to figure out what to do about that. So far, 13 states in DC have passed laws allowing people who are here illegally to get driver's licenses, and other states are currently debating this issue. And to be clear, we're talking about licenses for people living here without legal permission. Certain non-citizens like green card holders and some foreign students are already allowed to get driver's licenses. And these driver's licenses are different than real IDs. For those of you that don't know, real ID is like a federal standard for driver's licenses, and states have until October 2020 to comply. And if you have a real ID driver's license from a state, that means you've provided the appropriate documents like birth certificate or passport. You need this real ID to travel on planes, get into federal facilities, or go to a nuclear power plant. It was recommended after 9-11 to help tighten US security. But states can still issue driver's licenses that are not real ID compliant. These are for those who can't provide the appropriate documents. This includes citizens and people who are here illegally. People with non-compliant driver's licenses basically can only drive with it. They can't use it to wear planes. Phew, that was a lot of setup, but important for this debate. But what even made people start thinking about this? So, one of the main arguments for issuing these driver's licenses is that it's safer for the public. We met up with Karthik Ramakrishnan, a leading immigration scholar and professor of public policy and political science at UC Riverside, whose research supports these policies. The argument for providing driver's licenses is to A, reduce the consequences of unsafe driving, B, encouraging more people to have auto insurance by providing them with driver's licenses, and C, ultimately providing the kinds of fundamental um, uh, privileges that, uh, that we expect of state residents. So those are some of the main reasons why states have considered providing driver's licenses. In fact, according to the study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, California saw a significant decrease in hit and run incidents after they implemented the law allowing people who are here illegally to apply for driver's licenses. Just because someone does not qualify for a driver's license does not mean that they're not gonna drive a vehicle to get to work or to get to a doctor's appointment. But because they do so without a license, they also do so without auto insurance. And what the research has shown is that when people do that, they're more likely when they get into accidents to engage in hit and run. They're not gonna stay at the scene of these accidents because of the legal risks that they face. And there's a moral argument too. Having a driver's license allows you the ability to take care of basic human needs like accessing healthcare or education. Education specifically being a right protected by the law. And there are some economic benefits when more people buy auto insurance and pay the DMV to register their cars. So those are the core arguments for allowing states to issue driver's licenses to people who are here illegally. But it seems in reality, this isn't actually a popular policy. 
A nationally representative August 2019 Harvard-Harris poll found that only 28% of registered voters thought that immigrants who are here illegally should be allowed to get a driver's license. Similarly, when New York was debating this law, a March 2019 Quinnipiac poll showed that only 37% of voters supported it. Another claim is that it's simply not fair. These people broke the law, so why should they be given the privilege to drive? It's a common refrain we heard from New York politicians who were against this measure when their state was debating it. My perspective, it's a slap in the face to law-abiding New Yorkers, as well as new Americans that have taken the appropriate steps to do things in the right way and become citizens legally. I polled this issue back at home. 85% of the people in Senate District 52 are opposed to this. Why should any immigrant from any nation go through the long and costly process that my Greek grandparents and so many others went through and still are going through of becoming legal United States citizens if they can attain the benefits of being a citizen without following the law? By giving them this license, some see it as basically providing legitimacy for people who broke the law. And furthermore, it can be seen as encouraging illegal employment and in some cases, illegal immigration. It's sending the message that the United States is not serious about enforcing its immigration laws. Others argue that by granting licenses to people who are here illegally, you're increasing the risk of voter fraud and identity fraud in general. It's a common argument we heard all over the news. Isn't the real issue here that if you give driver's licenses to illegals, you're opening the door to illegal voting? That's it, what's going on. It will absolutely take place because yeah. one of the prime identifiers that give you the ability to vote, gives you your residence, etc., has been and is the driver's license. The fear is this. If we are accepting foreign documents at the DMV, those documents could be easier to forge. And when it comes to voting in many states, registering to vote is connected to getting a driver's license. So it could be easier for a non-citizen to register to vote. However, supporters of this legislation point out that report after report shows that voter fraud is super rare. And many states that have this law have checks in place to make sure you are not mistakenly registering people to vote who shouldn't be. Okay, so let's recap. Some of the main arguments for allowing people who are here illegally to get a driver's license include that it can make roads safer by decreasing uninsured and unlicensed drivers, leading to fewer hidden runs. It also allows for greater mobility for people to get to critical places like doctor's appointments and school. And there are small economic benefits for states from collecting more licensing fees and taxes. And on the flip side, some of the arguments against allowing driver's licenses include it rewards people for breaking the law, it can encourage illegal immigration or employment, and it can increase fraud since foreign documents are easier to forge. So what do you think? Do you think people who are here illegally should be allowed to apply for driver's licenses? Let us know in the comments below. Hey, thank you for watching. For more on immigration, be sure to check out our video on the asylum process. And if you want more from our student reporters, check out this video on violent video games. And if you're a teacher, get your students talking about this video on our website, KQED Learn. As always, I'm your host, Miles Best. Peace out.